What's up all you beautiful people? This is Brandon Quick here with the American Grappling Federation. I'm headed to American Top Team in Biloxi, Mississippi to go interview Coach Mike Sanford of obviously ACT, but he wins a lot of team trophies and has uh, uh, done a lot of good things with AGF, but also has UFC fighters and popular grapplers like Bill Cooper and other sponsored AGF athletes as well at his gym. So I'm super excited to go pick his brain and see what it's all about. <laughs> So usually at the beginning of class we start with the warm up, we kind of do like a shotgun routine, which is kind of like whatever you like to do at a tournament or before a fight that gets you loose and get your head in the game. So we kind of practice that in this session here. And then after that we warm up mostly through partner drills. So we get into like pummeling drills, takedown drills, okay. and different kinds of drills, right? So cool. if you want to get started with like a shotgun routine, however you like to get yourself loose, um, then I'll be jumping on these partner drills, alright? Alright, next round, same kind of drill, but now you can do any takedown you want, okay? You can also do, if you're a guard pull, you can pull guard and go for a sweep. You gotta attack, alright? No, just go into your butt, okay? So, guard pull and attack, or any takedown you wanna work on. We're gonna go two times, and our partner's gonna go two times for the whole round, okay? I want, you guys should be warm now, so a little more resistance. Remember, you're the, if you're the one that's uke, alright? If they're doing move to you, you're the barbell, okay? So you gotta add weights to the barbell as we get warmer and as we get better at the technique, right? We don't wanna get to the point where we're making them fail, but we wanna make sure that we're making them stronger, okay? Break on three, two, three, two. So I can take my time, if I don't like this arm, I can switch to this arm if I want to, all right? Once I get this tight waist all the way across, I'm almost like trying to grab like a sit bone here, okay? The higher I get, the better. Like you can even dip your shoulder under there a little bit to get a better grip, okay? But the higher I get this grip, the stronger my tight waist is gonna be. Now from here, I'm going to put my knee right next to his leg here. I'm going to pull him off his base and put his hip on the ground. Okay, Almost everything I look to do before I attack, I want to try to get their hip on the ground. Okay? If he's got a base, he's got mobility. I want to take that mobility away. So I'm here, my knee goes here, and now I'm going to post and pull his hip to the floor here. Okay. Now once his hip hits the ground, he's got to either like stay there and just let me beat him up, or he's going to try to recover, right? When he tries to recover, there's a couple things that can happen here. So, when I break him down here, I like to put my knee over his bottom leg. I split the legs a little bit. And when he comes up, it's going to be kind of slow because I already got a tight waist on him. So as he comes up, his back hand, like if he puts it, go back real quick. When he puts that elbow on the ground, anytime that happens, I'm always looking to open your eye. Okay? Here. I'm going to take my middle finger, put it right over the wrist joint. I'm going to put my elbow into the shoulder, circle, pull his hip back down again. Okay? And I'm going to keep this pressure. It's almost like an old bottom with my forearm, okay? I'm gonna keep that shoulder hit to the ground and my elbow is gonna pull his hip back, okay? Now once I'm here, I have half the cross body right. All I gotta do is stick my foot over the top, okay? So once I'm here, I just take this foot, I slide my knee up to his head, I can even sit my hip to the ground a little bit if I want, and this foot steps over like a chair seat, okay? Here, here. And then I like to actually split his legs and hook here. But I could step over into like a mountain if you want to. All right, you got options here. Depending on your opponent, what you want to do. I like to stick this in here, and I go cross body in here, and I stabilize it. One more time. Behind. Tight waist, knee on the ground, right next to his leg, pull his hip to the floor. He goes to pop back up, grab. Circle. My elbow is pulling his hip down. He's going to try to get up. He's going to try to get up. Boom. I just keep following. And he can't straighten his arm out. My knee is blocking his arm. His only real escape here straightens his arm out, right? And then he can circle out and get free. I can try to hammer lock him there or I can just block. I just pinch my knees on his elbow. He tries to get up. Circle, pressure, circle, pressure. Oh, give me the hammer lock. Okay? That hand comes out, he's in trouble. I just keep that elbow up pulling straight down, okay? And then from here, I can step over. Here, sit here, where I stick my foot into the leg, hook the shin, and now I've got the big cross body right. Okay? Let's start with that. Any questions? Break on three. Three. Fighting. 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 Okay? Yes, so this just like really wears people down. Okay? Okay. Uh, 
or sometimes they will put their elbow on the ground, but they'll straighten this leg out, okay, and try to cut to their base. They'll scissor their legs and try to get their base back, right? As long as I'm holding his hip back, he kind of has to do that. He can't just like turn over and hold him back, right? So when that leg scissors out, I can just kick a hook in instead. So let's say I get here, I hit my tight waist, I break Aiden off his base, and now from here, slow motion. See, I didn't really put his, he didn't really give me that ride, okay? I love, that's usually my first choice, personally. But you can choose this first if you want to. As long as my elbow keeps his hip back into me here. This is a strong position, okay? My knee's gonna come under, my other knee's gonna be ready to go over his leg. So I've got my knees ready to do my back take position here, okay? So this knee's coming in, and now from here, if that leg straightens out, he scissors his legs, this leg kicks right in. I've got his back here, okay? This knee comes over the top, and then once I'm here, again, I still want to get cross body control, okay? So before I started with the wrist ride on this side, and I put my hook on the other side, they gave me that cross body ride that I wanted. Now, since I started with the hook, I'm gonna to go to this wrist ride and break this down, grab the wrist ride here. Or, if I can't get it, I can just go here with a three quarter Nelson, okay? And I open this up, I put some pressure on it. Then I put my other hook in, and now I can make a miserable, okay? So, I want to make sure I get cross body control. So I can either one on one on the far side or three quarter Nelson if I put a hook in here. One more time. I'm here, tight waist, break him down. My knee's in position, he scissors his legs, I kick my hook in. Now from here, three quarter or wrist drive on cross body. Okay? Any question on that? So we're just going to practice like sliding that hook in and that leg goes back. Okay? It's kind of, it's, if they're getting up without putting that leg back, you're not putting enough pressure on their hip with their elbow, okay? Make sure that elbow is putting pressure on their hip. You don't want to be able to just turn away from them, okay? Break, yes. Are you connecting your elbows? Like, right to your elbow. It's about the tight waist, okay? This tight waist is in position here. This is it. I'm pulling it into my hip, okay? And this is sliding up, and I'm ready to go. Right in, and I'm in position. He tries to roll, this one comes right over, right to my body. So play with that, get some resistance as you get warm, okay? And as you get used to it, bring off your imagery. Yeah, no dead drilling. Looks like you mixed some wrestling and some jujitsu. Yeah, that's uh, that's what it's all about these days, man. So <laughs> definitely big on wrestling and jujitsu. Yeah. Do you have uh, do you have many wrestlers in Mississippi though, or do you, do you have no. any resident ones at least in the house? Yeah, we, we got wrestlers here, like imported wrestlers. But Mississippi, for you know, we were the last state in the U.S. to get wrestling. We just became number 50 this year. So 2022, they finally added wrestling to some of the high schools officially. So we didn't have a USA Wrestling Mississippi until just now, you know? So we haven't homegrown a lot of wrestlers. We've had guys learn wrestling through MMA here, and uh, we've had really good wrestlers come in. We got Odie Delaney here, who is our head wrestling coach. The guy's phenomenal. He's, in my opinion, one of the best nogi grapplers on the planet. He fights for one championship now, and uh, he's a killer. Uh, but he, he runs a wrestling program here. He's an NCAA All-American, and uh, he teaches wrestling here a few days a week, and he, you know, fights professionally for us. So he's on the mat training with the guys as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where some of the good cookies are for yeah. the fighters and advanced grapplers. Yep. I don't like to do this. Yeah. Um, just, and this is, this is, I run into guys and I, I, I ask them questions. Just like you said, there's variations. There's not what right. But for me, I feel like the dark time in the dark is the arm triangle. The arm triangle is the money because you can, you can reach that gun. You can reach further with the arm triangle, right? And then you can blast through and there's on top and you can side control or chasing the fucking, right? So if he, if he, connect, stable grip, stay as tight as you So like my knee will eventually, you see how I walk away, my knee causes the separation and I don't need to be stronger than you. So now I'm out on your foot. And like everything in jiu-jitsu, very down to worst of all. Guillotine, armbar, everything I'm working from. Down, very down to worst, right? So I've never been on that. This leg's fucked up, so I'm that Like, I've never been this, the, not never, but I don't like to do this. Then all the, back, the polos, my black belts that are 179, will fucking take my back in 30 years. They're just gonna grab it, they're gonna hurt, 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 they
four or five years. I guess. Yeah, I like that too. Do you Shout agree? Out. No. All right, guys. So we're gonna start. Not even loading. Turtle right here. tight wings. You're over the hips. Person on bottom. Escape or reverse. Or submit. Okay. Uh, person on top. Secure dominant position. Break it down to submission, right? So either guy can get a submission. Either guy can't get a dominant position. If you roll, put a guy in 411. That's the same mistake in the back to me, all right? Um, otherwise, look for the back, look for dominant position, and person on bottom can win by an escape, okay? Person on top can win by dominant position or something, okay? So, yeah, you're not confused, all right? So you get on your side, okay? Oh, what the and, fuck? Uh, <laughs> Give me the hardest guy. Yeah. <laughs> So I started in martial arts pretty young. Like uh, on my mom's side of the family, there was, you know, my mom comes from an Irish immigrant family. And uh, my grandfather was a boxer. My aunt was a boxer. The first year they had the Golden Gloves in New York, uh, 1995, my aunt ended up going to the finals and winning it. So it was a pretty cool experience for me as a little kid. You know, I'm, uh, I'm 10 years old and I get to go to Madison Square Garden. I'm in the back and my aunt goes out into the middle of the ring in Madison Square Garden, wins a fight and wins the Golden Gloves, gets in the newspaper. So that had a, that had a pretty big impact on me. I had started training martial arts before that, but once that happened, that was kind of where I think I became a real martial artist. Like I knew that I wanted to do this in a serious way. Um, but I, you know, I did like karate and stuff when I was like seven. You know, and I messed around with some boxing stuff before that, and I'd started wrestling a little bit. Uh, but I think after that experience in Madison Square Garden, like I, I could see myself, you know, wanting to be a martial artist and wanting to take this more seriously. Um, and I have to travel with her for that um, event too. She brought me with her, you know, to train with her in some of these different famous gyms around New York. And I thought that was pretty cool. You know, her trainer was a famous competitor back in the 70s. Um, and I had to meet all these different boxing champions. And it made it feel more accessible to me, you know, to, to be at that level. Um, so that was, a, that was a major defining experience in my youth. Mm -hmm. So you started training. What, what did you start training? What, what martial arts first? So, uh, my first introduction was with the boxing, you know, that was through my family. Um, and then my, I really wanted to get into like karate, and, you know, martial arts like I saw on TV, Ninja Turtles, stuff like that. So my mom got me into a karate school and I got my feet wet with that. And then I, I was obsessed with wrestling. I really wanted to get into wrestling, but nobody wanted to train wrestling to, you know, a seven year old kid. So we had to like shop around. And finally, she found somebody. Um, we moved to Rocky Point. She found somebody that would do private lessons for me. So I started learning some wrestling at about seven, eight years old. And then uh, once once I got into middle school, um, I was able to wrestle in the middle school club um, at you know my at my school. Um, and then I kind of went into the high school team a little bit, and uh, you know I was kind of my introduction to grappling um, back then. But uh, it, it just you know it was, wrestling was difficult for me. I didn't I didn't have a lot of success. I was I was like the best one my weight on my team. But I was in a really tough area, so I got I, got, I lost a lot of wrestling matches when I started competing. This is still in yeah. New York. Yeah, this is New York. Yep. What? When did you move out of New York today? Uh, I didn't move out of New York. I, I didn't move down here until 2010. You know, oh, so, okay. so that's, yeah, that's yeah. later on in the story. Yeah, yeah, later on. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you're 10, you start to wrestle and get in towards high school. Did you train any other martial arts there or just wrestling at that point in boxing? Yeah, mostly just wrestling and boxing and, uh, you know, some, some of my traditional karate. I was in karate and kempo. Um, so basically you were yeah. what Bruce Lee said to be. Yeah, kind of, man, in, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Boxing with some wrestling. Yeah, and then, uh, and then I started to um, hear about, uh, you know, mixed martial arts a little bit. Back then it was kind of hazy to me. I didn't really understand what it was. Um, but... Uh, it was something that you know kind of caught my interest a little bit, um, and uh, I started training in some other traditional martial arts. 
And that's how I got introduced to submission grappling. I started training with a guy named Philip Shockman in New York, and uh, it was in a ninjutsu school. Uh, but he was actually like a pretty sound submission grappler, and I got introduced to submissions. And to me, that was like, this is what I've been looking for, you know? I just love it, you know? Because uh, like in wrestling, man, it's hard. You have to put somebody on their back and hold them down. It's hard work, you know? And I was kind of lazy. In jiu-jitsu, you could be lazy and still be really good, you know? So, so when I found, uh, oh, I don't always have to try to get on top. As long as I can, you know, put them in a chokehold, it doesn't matter if I'm on bottom. If I'm still in, I can still be in dominant position and not be on top all the time. You know, to me, that was that was really eye-opening. And I, I kind of fell in love with submission grappling. Put a lot of time into that. Um, I did a lot of traditional schools that did submission grappling. I learned some catch wrestling, a little bit of sambo. And I started bouncing around a lot. And then that's how I got into some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Back then, this is like 2003, you know, 2004. It wasn't, it wasn't really widespread yet. You know, there was Henzo Graces in New York City. Um, and Henzo had a couple guys that were getting higher level at opening schools on the island. Um, you had Matt Sarah, you know, but none of them were really close to me, so I didn't have a lot of access to it um, until, you know, I went I, I to start it out, you know, so I started looking out for it, and I went and trained at a few jiu-jitsu schools, and, uh, you know, tried to find one that I could, I could you know, go full-time on. Um, but me, being a, you know, dumb white belt in jiu-jitsu, uh, I made the mistake, I went in, I rolled at one of the guys at Matt Sarah's school, and he didn't tap me out, so I'm thinking, like, well, this guy's not going to teach me real well. You know, he's a brown belt, he's going super easy on me, and I'm just thinking, like, I'm doing good with the guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went to uh, another school, uh, Master Mansouri, it opened up on Island recently, he got his red belt from Julio Gracie, and uh, I went to his school, and um, they had me go with the white belt, and I was able to tap the white belt out, and then I was like, oh, okay, this guy comes in with a little bit of knowledge, so one of the purple belts with me and just wrecked me in slow motion, and that's what sold me, you know, so sometimes people need that kind of lesson, you know, and I always try to remember that too, like what my first lesson was like, how my mindset was, was I wanted to get, I wanted somebody to show me that they can do whatever they want to me, and that's what I want to learn how to do, you know. So after that experience, I, I started training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu officially, um, joined there, and that was, you know, I, I put a lot of time into that from then on, you know, so uh, Jiu-Jitsu pretty much took over, you know, around then. And I did do a few fights for that. I did a little bit of boxing, like, you know, gym fights, and uh, I did do two MMA kind of underground, you know, the MMA wasn't legal in New York, but there was a gym that had a cage in the basement over by my boxing gym, and they would come in and try to get boxers to fight their guys, you know, because their guys knew, like, karate and, you know, you know, bad grappling. Um, so, so they would try to set up like you know fights over there, and I did a couple of those too, uh, which I won. Small so, yeah, yeah, like you know exactly, you know, not like real official, you know nobody nobody's really highly skilled, not like even real amateur fights, but definitely you know experience, um, and that kind of you know was eye opening too. Because I saw a lot of people getting submissions there. That's kind of when I started looking for that submission grappling scene a little bit, and I found the jiu-jitsu school, um, and then which branched me into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And so then. You come down, to, was, the, was the move over to coaching and to coaching high-level fighters, was that eventually when you came down to Mississippi, or did you, what, where's the, the, the New York, Mississippi gap? Yeah, it's, uh, so uh, a lot happened, man. So I, I, was, uh, I was going to college um, when I was training jiu-jitsu full-time, um, and uh, college wasn't really working out for me, you know? Um, and uh, I was having, I was conflicted, you know, I was in a bad relationship and uh, going through college. I wasn't really wanting to continue with college, I didn't know what else to do. And uh, my, one of my jiu-jitsu coaches said, well, you know, you can just train full-time or you stay at the gym. You know, you know, because I had all these expenses I didn't know how to deal with. And, you know, my life was kind of a mess back then. And, uh, and I didn't know if he was serious or not, but like I really started thinking about it. And one day I finally asked him, hey, look, are you serious about like letting me stay here? Well, I'm just going to drop out of college, I'll come here full-time. He's like, yeah. Do it and I'll, I'll teach you how to teach classes and uh, you can compete for the gym. And I was like, all right, great, I did it. I moved into the gym. I had this little room in the back of uh, Master Mentor Schools. I got a red belt and learning from every day, showing me how to teach classes and uh, a bunch of really high level purple belts that were helping me too. And that uh, was an amazing experience. You know, I lived there for two years. Um, and I, I went through like an instructor training with Master Mentor, learned how to like teach you know, a lot of his stuff. And then uh, him and the guy split up and parted ways, you know, as partners often do. And uh, I ended up, you know, living in the place. I, I, I stayed on one side, you know, um, and uh, I was I continued there for a little while. But it, it ended up being a lot on me, and I'm the blue belt, and I'm pretty much the only guy there all the time, you know, for a while. So it got a little hard on me. And my wife now, who was my girlfriend at the time, had moved to Florida. Um, so she offered me to move in the period down in Florida, and um, I moved down there and started training with uh, Dana Marais. You know, I talked to my instructors about it. They said that was a good guy to continue with. Um, I got with Daniel, me and him hit it off. I went to a few places, kind of checked out. There was a lot of good guys in Florida, you know, back then. So it was a little bit different. Like, you know, the scene of YouTube blew up a little bit. A lot of Brazilians like Florida because it's kind of like Rio weather-wise. 
and uh, you know, we had Pablo Popovich was there, and like all these high-level guys were there. So um, I trained with a few of them, but me and Daniel just kind of hit it off, and uh, I started training with him full time, and uh, earned the rest of my ranks under Daniel that way. You know? And then that's what kind of led me to here. So uh, Daniel trained a lot of guys that were fighting in the UFC at the time. One of them was Alan, um, and he would sometimes bring me in as like a sparring partner for people. Um, Alan but, Belcher. Yeah, Alan Belcher, uh, who owned a gym here in Mississippi. And he was going to do his first main event fight. And Daniel had worked in for a few previous fights, like when he fought Cote and uh, a couple others. Uh, but this was going to be his first main event. He was going to fight Damian Maya, and it was going to be the main event for a fight night in Rio de Janeiro. Ooh. So it was a really big deal. Yeah, so Alan was excited about it. They were going to do his camp down in Rio, and then they were going to do the fight. So the only problem was Alan had this gym and he didn't have anyone to teach classes. He had had, I think Jawa Cease was teaching here for a little while, but he had left and uh, he didn't have an instructor here at the time. So Daniel recommended, you know, flying me out, having me teach classes for a few weeks while he's in, you know, Brazil. And he comes back, I can go back to Florida or whatever. Um, so I came out here, started teaching a little bit, and then uh, Alan ended up hiring me out full time. Um, so I stayed here ever since. That was in 2010. And uh, yeah, never, never really looked back. And I, that's how I got into teaching full-time. Before that, I was kind of like an assistant. I was competing a lot. Um, and around that time, I'd broken my arms. So I was out of competition. And I just kind of put my effort into the students at that time. And I kind of fell in love with that. You know, I really liked teaching even more than competing. You know? and, and now you are a senior have a, a pretty good stable of MMA fighters, jiu-jitsu grapplers, everything. So um, did you end up diving really big into the striking world as well, too, to become an in the overall in the make coach or do you stick to just the grappling side of the fighters? Yeah, no, I uh, so I've always been attracted to martial arts, you know, and to me that's like a full spectrum of martial arts, you know? Like grappling is one side of the spectrum, and then we have striking, and then there's even weapons. I'm into all of it, you know? Um, so I what I wanted was to be secure and confident in pretty much any altercation I could find myself in. Within reason. You know, obviously if you know ten people try to beat you up, there's not gonna be a lot you can do. But I wanted to do whatever I could within reason. Um, so, uh, I've always been into striking. I mean, my, my first thing I started with was boxing, you know? Um, but I, I didn't have a lot with, like, I got into Muay Thai more heavily when I came out here. Because Alan was really big in Muay Thai and had a lot of good kickboxers over here. So I wanted to have to do that better. Um, and, uh, you know, getting mixing it all together, like, combining the striking with the grappling, that's what I really started, you know, understanding better after coming out here. You know, and I started fighting uh, mixed martial arts and amateur, you know, around the circuit here and learning it to, to a deeper level. Um, and then, as, as I was doing that, we had these guys on the team here who were fighting professional and coming up and uh, starting to have success. So the team started to build up. You know, Alan's a really good recruiter. He recruited me and, uh, you know, Alan Belcher, he, 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 if he sees he's got a really good eye for talent. You know, they call him the talent. He's got a good eye for talent and he recruits people. And uh, he knows how to build a team, you know? So that's what he did. He built a good team out here. And who's I was a, who's some of the people on your team right now? Who's, who's some of your fighters in your stable? So uh, we have... Uh, Right now, fighting at a high level, um, you guys can watch them like one championship and you know UFC and you know, the Ultimate Fighter stuff like that. We have you know Alan Belcher is fighting at BKFC now. Um, he was ranked as high as number four in the UFC at one point, uh, and we have Jason Knight. He's been here his whole career. Uh, he was ranked as high as number fifteen. He fought um, you know guys like Dan Hooker and Chad Skelly and you know Bruce Lee. He got a bunch of bonuses in the UFC. Uh, and he's fighting in Khabib's organization right now, um, so he should be having a fight later this year. Brandon Davis, he's uh, he's a UFC bantamweight. Um, he's really good. Also, he's got a few bonuses himself. He's got a fight coming up next month. Uh, he had fought to beat Magomed Sharapov. Um, that was the fight where he got the Suhak stretch on him. He took that fight on five, uh, it was, I think six days notice, something like that. Um, and he was winning the fight, so he was winning on the feet. Uh, you know, won the first round. Second round, I caught the Suhawk stretch, <laughs> getting up away from him, but you know, it happens, he beats a beast. Noted on a highlight, bro. Just yeah, on highlight, highlight yeah, it's on the run. <laughs> but uh, but he's, he's awesome, man. He's phenomenal. He's the head striking coach here, and he's excellent. Um, and, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's got some new tricks he's going to be showing um, in his next fight. And we have Odie Delaney, he's our wrestling coach here. Um, he's absolutely phenomenal. He's fighting in one championship right now. Um, we had the hardest side of running in fights. So he got signed to one championship pretty early. He was only 2-0 as a pro. And uh, one championship ate him up. Um, so they've got him on a pretty steady schedule right now. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to be a world champion um, relatively soon. Uh, everyone's going to know his name. 
And then, uh... Two females I just saw? Yeah, we have uh, Hannah Guy. She was on the Ultimate Fighter last season. Uh, she's got a big fight coming up in Invicta against another girl who's on the Ultimate Fighter. That's going to be yeah. in a couple weeks. And they'll, and they'll work me the whole, and they'll work me the whole time. Later, guys. <laughs> Hey, Bill, give me a second. I'll probably be like five minutes. Yeah, take your time, my man. I'm here all day. Let's just start over with the yeah. else. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So we've also got Hannah Guy. Uh, she was on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, she's been in and out of here for a while, but she recently moved here, um, and she's doing uh, her next fight camp uh, for Katniss. She was also on the Ultimate Fighter show. They're going to be fighting on Invicta um, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, she's excellent. I'm really excited about her future, too. Um, and then uh, we have... Uh, Bill Cooper is looking to get back in MMA. Um, we're having a hard time getting him to fight back too. He's probably gonna have to go straight to you know a bigger show because all these local guys. We've got like four fights pull out on him already, you know. But he's uh, he's ready. He's getting back in there, and uh, he's always fun to watch. <laughs> so you guys are big supporters. You've got AGF and the progression. I see of our trophies on your wall. You yeah. know, and uh, you guys have been big supporters there. Not just supporters, but team champion winners. I, uh, a lot of you guys work for me, referee for me. Uh, work tables, you know, everything, and uh, great crew, good vibes here, um, and we're trying to help that Biloxi Jiu-Jitsu scene, you know, tell, yeah. tell us a little bit about your sports Jiu-Jitsu side of the house. Yeah, man, uh, so, man, it's great, yeah, the whole scene in Biloxi is just blown up. I mean, I remember when I first came out here, there was pretty much nobody else around here doing Jiu-Jitsu, you know, Bernardo Patel moved out from Brazil, and he was like the second place that opened up in the area. And then there was a couple other like, little places that would kind of, you know, come and go. Um, but now, man, it's like, you know, Leo Delgado's here. He's phenomenal. Uh, Bernardo Patel is one of his black belts is here. Uh, Gracie United's got a couple of good black belts here. Um, you know, a couple of guys from this gym opened up their own places, and they're really good. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's it, there's a really strong jiu-jitsu scene over here now, and it's developing further all the time. So, you know, where there used to not be a whole lot of um, jiu-jitsu competition, now it's like a hot spot almost, you know? Was Jiu Jitsu, was AGF the first Jiu Jitsu tournament here? I think so, man. Uh, really? So there was like, I think there was like uh, a small one from like uh, a local event from Louisiana, like the local Louisiana Association did a show here uh, once or twice. But I think for Biloxi, I think, yeah, I think the first Jiu Jitsu show, like tournament, I think AGF's the first one to, to really, you know, home in on the spot. They asked me to come for like two or three years, and yeah. I was like, dude, nobody's going to Biloxi. Yeah. <laughs> and Biloxi's the first city that made me a believer on really listening to our clientele. Because it turned into a two-day. Now I think that the two-day kind of went away because it got spread out with Destin and New Orleans, and, and some of the clothing, so, so, some of the dates were closer, which we'll fix for 2023. But uh, it was super awesome to watch sponsored competitors, you know, kids from kids to adults grow in the jiu-jitsu rank, grow in the jiu-jitsu scene because we've been there for a few years now, and uh, it's always a pleasure to watch your guys. You guys, are, you know, have. Excellent jiu-jitsu in terms of offensive, defensive, everything. It's always a pleasure to watch some of your guys. When I watch your higher ranked guys or any of the guys that I know that I sponsor, we'll sit and watch. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, you know. Yeah, and, and I, I credit that to my team, man. This is not about me at all. You know, like one of the one of the big things we believe in is like ecological dynamics. And I try to create an ecosystem where learning is just part of the culture that happens, you know. So a lot of our training is through drills where we put constraints on people and you know things the way to do it wrong is kind of taken out of the equation by the rules I put on, you know? And uh, that's why I'm a big believer in rules. You know, you see me arguing about rules all the time online, right? Um, rules are what develops athletes, you know? Those constraints are what make them get good at certain things. And if your rules, like the average Jeff has, I, you know, I speak out against one. A lot of the rules make people worse at fighting, you know? So it's that's the direction it's going to go. Once we change those rules, like I love what AGF's doing, um, those, those rules will help develop better fighters, you know, overall. And I like, I like to me, I like the rules that are most adaptable overall. The things that are going to expand into whatever somebody wants to do as a martial artist. The less specific they are, the more I'm about them. Um, so I like more rule, rules that will help people learn how to get on top, you know, how to get back up. That's never going to be bad for you, you know. And um, when, when you know, you're in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation rules, a lot of times it's more about getting the guy into your guard so you can score, right? Or, or you know, passing the guard, which are things that we don't see, you know, quite translate as well into you know, more open formats of fighting like mixed martial arts. Um, so I'm big on the constraints in the environment, and here we have just a, a phenomenal group of guys, you know. So, I mean, we have uh, teaching besides me. Um, I have Dan Carlson, who's an awesome black belt. He competes in AGF. Um, he's excellent, very like-minded, you know, person. Um, he came up, he didn't actually get his black belt here. He moved out here as a black belt, but he 
fits right in with our culture. He's an awesome instructor. He came up under like Barry Yoshida and Joel Tudor. He got his black belt from Joel Tudor. And uh, he's just an awesome, cool guy. He couldn't be here today. He's been a little under the weather. But uh, which you can, you know, we've met him before at the tournament, I think. He's competed a couple times. And then uh, Alex Harrell is my first black belt. He's excellent. Um, small guy, super technical. And to me, that's what like Jiu Jitsu is about. Though. He's, 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 uh, I got to roll with yeah, he's got a great game. And yeah. he reps. Yeah, any refs, yeah. Um, and then Bill Cooper, of course, you know, Bill was a legend, you know, when I was, you know, just getting my feet wet in jiu-jitsu pretty much. So it's really cool having him here. Um, and then, uh, you know, my wife, Anne, she teaches our women's jiu-jitsu. She was, uh, she won the, the world for her division's pro world. Um, and then, um, you know, I have a bunch of guys that teach MMA here also. Um, you know, the fighters bring a lot to the table as training partners. Odie Delaney with his uh, grappling classes, wrestling classes are just awesome and they fit right into everything we do. Um, you know, I'm big on folk style wrestling. I think folk style wrestling adds so much to Jiu Jitsu. And I think we're seeing more and more of that in the Jiu Jitsu scene now, especially for the Nogi scene. And I think we're going to continue to see that. I think I think the future of Jiu Jitsu is going to be a, a major merger between a lot of folk style tactics and a lot of uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tactics. I think that's kind of where we're heading. Um, so uh, it's just, it's, it's the environment here that, that's helping people get so good and, you know, uh, build that skill set. So uh, all, everyone's bringing something to the table, you know? I'm excited to be bringing you another episode. We are in Biloxi, Mississippi, and I visited American Top Team today. You got Mike Sanford, who's teaching a bunch of current and uh, uh, veteran UFC fighters, 1FC fighters, and black belts galore over there, jiu-jitsu guys. It was a really awesome school. They have won a lot of AGF team trophies and team medals as well. So I've seen and recognized jiu-jitsu for a few years here in the, in the uh, uh, southeast side of the United States and always thought it was really good. Obviously you can see a product of Mike Sanford in the UFC and 1FC. And uh, man, it was really enjoyable to go over there, pick his brain, interview him, and uh, train with the guys. Got to train with American legend, Bill Cooper. Uh, my guys went over there, met a couple of my friends there. That's the jiu-jitsu culture and the lifestyle that we love. And we want to keep creating and putting content out for you guys to see. So we're going to set up at 6 to 8 p.m. tonight. And then tomorrow's the event. Tell us a little bit of how it went today. Man, it was a blast. Uh, everyone had a ton of fun. Uh, there's a lot of really tough competitors here today. We had some great matches. Um, I, I mean, I'm really happy with my team results. Uh, all our guys went out there, fought hard, had great matches. Um, and uh, we had a good turnout from like the whole south, it seems like. You know, like, guys yeah. from Texas and up north. And it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, I did see like people that I was like, man, you're from they're from eight hours away, even 12 yeah. hours away. There were some people that came for sure. Biloxi's coming up, man, for sure. Yeah. And I think you're a big part of that, you know? The, all the gyms that are here that are uh, obviously winning team trophies and, and, and growing the whole sport. You know, I know it's a competition against each other, but we're all growing the sport. And I, it's really cool to watch it, you know? It is, man. It's a blast. And uh, how do you think it was, me being the owner of the tournament, coming and visiting the gym? Did you, your guys yeah. receive that well? Oh, yeah. It's super cool. Everyone loved it, man. So, uh, everyone had a ton of fun yesterday. Uh, we had, you know, Good turn out for the class, and uh, it was it was a blast. Thank you so much for coming by, man. Yeah, heck yeah, it's been you years, too. So. <laughs> yeah, sweet. See yeah. you guys in the next one. All right.